we are at it again. Now this time uh, we are picking up a load that is actually ready. Hey, how about that? Post facility, post cereal, uh, in Wilmington, Illinois, which is a uh, suburb uh, just a little bit south of Joliet and a tick west of Joliet. So it's basically right on I-55, Lorenzo Lorenzo Road exit, if you're familiar. And uh, so I just went in. Super nice lady uh, inside the office. I love it when I encounter nice people uh, at these shippers and receivers. Um, really really very much appreciated uh, wonderful woman and uh, so I've been told where to drop my empty and which loaded to pick up and from where uh, so let's go make that happen shall we um, let's see might as well just take you with uh, can I turn around here looks like I can yeah let's give it a shot uh, bup, bup, bup. Uh, what's the worst that could happen, right? And my tandems are all the way back. So I should have room. And let's see if we can do this without snapping our aerodynamic flaps back there. And I think we are good. All right, so now I need to find door 150. We are technically on their yard. Let's put our hazards on. And the slow roll to 150. Okay, I need to uh, slide my tandems all the way to the rear. It's kind of standard practice, and especially a lot of these bigger corporate places. All right, let's get out there and slide these tandems. One of the things that I never do is touch anything on the outside of a semi truck without gloves. Uh, first and foremost for protection, but more realistically, since I'm always careful, uh, I don't have to worry about that too much, but just because I don't want to get dirty, and it's not that I'm afraid of dirt, it's that when your hands get all dirty, then you get back into your truck, and invariably you're touching your steering wheel and everything else in the truck, and before you know it, your truck is a pig pen, um, and that's where you live, so I like to keep it clean, hence gloves, uh, plus again, protect your hands from all the metal crap so that's the slider on these Schneider trailers they have the manual slider bar for those of you who uh, have never seen this before they retract those pins in the rail so that you can change the positioning of what they call the tandems when they say tandems they're talking about these two rear axles they are tandem axles uh, that's why they are referred to as tandems so what I'm going to do now is that these tandems have the brakes set so they're not going to move and I'm going to go forward and this whole trailer is going to slide this way and those tires are going to move all the way to the back. That's what they refer to as sliding your tandems to the rear. And uh, they do that because they want the wheels here so that when the forklift goes in and out of the truck, it doesn't have that, uh, that uh, cantilever effect of bouncing the, the trailer up and down. The other thing I need to do is open these doors. And that's something that I constantly forget about because I spent so much time driving on that Walmart account, driving Walmart trailers that have <laughs> roller doors, which just roll up and down. And I never had to worry about getting out and opening doors before backing in. Well, now I do. <laughs> So, I still, every now and then, I mean, I've pulled so many trailers with conventional doors by now, 
But still, every now and then, my brain is in Walmart mode and I completely forget about my doors. <laughs> I back all the way into a door and then I realize, oh, wait a second. Would help if they could actually get into it. Yeah, some of these can be a real pain. There we go. Okay. Let's get these things slid. Now the gloves, gloves come off. Not because I want to fight anybody, but because the gloves are dirty, my hands are not. So now we're going to go ahead and slide. So I'm just going to release the tractor. The red is the trailer. We're going to leave those brakes set. Now I'm going to push it a little bit backwards just to get those pins to unlock because they've had forward pulling pressure on them the entire time as we've been driving. And if I just go forward now, they might not retract. The pins might not retract because they're pushed up against those rails. So I always just give it just a teeny little bit of a, and I heard them click right there. I don't know if you'll hear that on the video, but just putting it in gear and just giving it a little nudge releases those pins and you don't sit here and be one of those people bouncing a trailer all over the place. Um, trying to get the wheels to slide. See how nice and smooth that is? Hopefully you'll see that in the side camera. Uh, nice and slow, don't jam them. And there it is, right there. Resistance, and I pull the brake first and then put it in neutral uh, so that I know that they're all the way back. So now let's head back there. Now you can see the position of those wheels. They were up here before. Now they're all the way back here. Last thing we need to do, there are those pins. Hopefully you can see that, but we need to release that arm and it's all a spring mechanism. So now if I push this trailer back just a little bit with the brake still applied, those pins are gonna snap right into place. Everything's locked exactly the way they should be. So we'll go do that now. And you can hear it when they click in, you can hear it if you're listening for it. And release the tractor once again. There we go. You hear that click? They are in. Later that night. Well, all right. So we arrived finally <laughs> at the uh, Walmart grocery distribution center in Olney, Illinois. Uh, Olney, Illinois. So it's uh, kind of close to Effingham, kind of close to St. Louis. Um, so anyway, about to drop a trailer. So uh, let's go.